this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, Wolf. It's Windows Pro time. Right, tell you there, champs. Now, you may or may not know that you know, studio laptops are coming out. And what are studio laptops? They're just basically laptops certified by NVIDIA, I guess, to meet a certain standard to be ready for content creation, whether it's 3D, video editing, you know, any content creation. Now, I'm actually inside the Predator Triton 500 at the moment, and this has an RTX 2080. And the reason why I'm using this laptop, I actually have the Aero OLED in, and oh my God, you need to stay tuned for that review because that thing is a friggin' monster, like 80 watts sustained just and calibrated the screen best at any laptop. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. Now, first things first, the reason I selected this laptop to do this testing is because it does have an RTX 2080. So Nvidia said you can play back 8K red raw footage with a RTX 2080. Well, let's see. This is at full, of course, and no, you can't do it. I've tried it in Resolve, you can't do it as well. Now, if you download red sort of video editor or whatever the hell it is, yes, you can play back 8K red raw footage. So hopefully Adobe and, um, you know, Resolve actually, you know, put some effort in and actually make it to be able to play back red raw footage. But with these studio laptops, is it a load of toss? Should you buy a studio laptop? Is there any benefit to it? Or can you actually just use the studio driver and get the benefits of being a studio laptop? Well, let's explore that, let's find out. This laptop isn't a studio laptop, but it has the specs good enough to be one, right? Because basically the studio laptop just means I think it's got a display that's good enough for content creation. It has a, obviously an RTX graphics and whatever, Intel CPU, and I think that's basically what it is, but it's tested. I guess that's the only thing and certified. But is there a difference when you use the studio driver? And then how much better is it than the game ready driver? And how do you actually do this? How do you actually get the studio driver? And will it affect your gaming performance when you use a studio driver? Now I'm using this laptop here, this Predator. I'm gonna use the studio driver. Then I'm gonna use the game ready driver. But I just wanted to do some benchmarks here. So how do you get the studio driver? You just have to install GeForce Experience. So you just, if your laptop doesn't have this, install it, just Google it, GeForce Experience, download it, install it. Now, what you get here is you can see, learn more video studio drivers, all right. Supercharge of creative apps, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you get 30-bit support or some crap and all right, so yeah, there is difference in there, 30-bit support, okay. And I'll just give it a long and short of it. Yes, there is a difference, and for gaming too. So the way you get it is just where it says check for updates. If your laptop is compatible, you can go to Game Ready Driver or Studio Driver. Now, if you click on that Studio Driver, update to the latest driver, boom, you have the Studio Driver. But what sort of difference are we talking about here? Okay, so here on the right we have the studio driver and here on the left we have stock, just the game ready driver. Now, there's not that much difference in the overall score, 16,847 with the studio and just over 17,000 with the game ready. So you would think that's in margin of an error, area sort of thing there. But if you have a deep dive into it, there is a bit of a difference, okay? Nearly 1,000 on the graphics. So that's not within margin of error there. That's a bit more than that. You know, you can see here 83 frames per second versus 78. That's a bit of a difference there. So there is a difference when you're gaming, okay? So the studio driver is slower, and I've done this test many times. I will do more testing with the arrow. When I get the arrow in, I'll be doing the benchmarks with the studio driver and benchmarks without it. Throughout all the games I test, I'll be doing that. You can see there straight away there is a difference. Something's happening there that, you know, for some reason when you have the studio driver, it's not as fast as the game ready driver. It's probably what you think would happen. Okay, so here we have the Puget Systems benchmark. This is the Premiere Pro benchmark. And what's great about this benchmark is it not only tests rendering, it tests live playback and it tests some effects as well. Some, you know, effects you'll put in the timeline, transitions, whatever. So it encompasses everything you do in a video editor. Render, playback, effects. 
So this is a very thorough test. So what you can see here is the studio on the right is indeed faster in all situations on this benchmark. You can see it gets a higher score, overall score, 709 versus 761 versus 671. You see playback, it's better for playback, an extra two there, and you can see for export, it is quicker. So yeah, I mean, it's not a big difference, but there certainly is a difference. The studio driver is doing better with this creative app. So now we're in the Photoshop benchmark, Pugin System Photoshop benchmark, download it, test it for yourself, and what you can see here is, surprisingly, there is a bit of a difference here, sort of significant sort of difference. We're getting, you know, 17 more with the studio driver and you've got to remember that Photoshop it's not really GPU heavy there are some things that are GPU like previews and some plugins it does use the GPU but it's not really that hard on the GPU you know with the filter score it's higher GPU score again and overall it's just faster for this so I wasn't expecting there to really be a difference in Photoshop but there actually is with Photoshop as well now again, another Puget System Premiere Pro benchmark and always the studios on the right, if you want to know. This is sort of like real world. It is scripted, but it is like real world playback, real world rendering and so on. And as you can see here, this is GPU effects only 30 frames per second. What you can see here is, wow, there's stuff all different here. So this is 30 frames per second, GPU effects it, and basically there's one more on the export score with the um, studio driver. You could say that was just the differences in the run. I run them a few times, it was always faster, but yeah, it's not a big deal. But now we'll look at 60 frames per second GPU effects, and what we can see here is, there is a bit of a difference here. You can see on the export score with the studio driver on the right again, you get 35 versus 32 with the game ready driver. So yeah, there is a bit of a difference there when you've done the Puget System benchmark where it tests everything together, the playback, the export and the effects, you get better performance with the studio driver. I guess, yeah, you, you lose a bit in the gaming. So it's up to you. Do you want to lose that little bit of gaming performance for, you know, a little bit of a gain in the studio drivers? I guess it's up to you. Stay tuned for more with the Aero OLED. I'm going to investigate this more, but certainly for me, I think, you know, the gaming performance is not that much of a hit so far. I will test more, of course, with more games if it's taking a huge hit and you only get a little bit of a game with the studio uh, maybe I'll stick with the game ready, but if it doesn't impact the game in that much and I am getting these sort of gains, get the studio driver if you are a content creator, test it out yourself and yeah, it does work, it is faster and there's no doubt with creative application it is faster. Interesting, catch you in the next one, tally ho.